In a secluded town off the Texas coast, the horrific homicides of two black women rattle investigators and loved ones. You took something special to me and my family. Who were these women left by an abandoned motel dumpster? Were they targeted in an act of hate? Put up, put up. That's what we need your help with. Or was it someone in their inner circle who wanted them dead? Wow. Well, joining us uh, now, Domati Pongo uh, from uh, True Life Crime Week that's happening on MTV uh, coming up in just a couple of days. I can't believe MTV is uh, diving into this world. But of course, I was telling you before we got started, this is the stuff that just, um, you know, I've been watching for years. I'm fascinated with this. So tell me how you got involved and specifically, Domati, with MTV. I mean, again, this is just so outside of the box, I think, for that particular network. Well, well, thank you again, Carly. And you're right, man. MTV is doing it the way only MTV can do it. We're focusing on cases involving young people. And I got involved in uh, the last season, uh, which premiered January 8th, 2020. And our first case was involving Kanika Jenkins. She was a young girl from the west side of Chicago. I'm from Chicago, from the south side. And the reason I joined this opportunity is because we weren't just telling stories about you know, true crime. You know, you, you watch a lot of true crime shows. I do. Probably. Murder happens. There's a redirect, a red herring, and then you solve the case, put a button on it, that's it. What we wanted to do was talk about the social justice issues, the societal issues affecting the victim. So in the Kanika Jenkins case, which premiered last year, for example, it wasn't just about, you know, was this an accident or was there foul play? It was, why were there people protesting and believing that the investigators didn't take this case seriously? Well, we need to unpack yeah. Chicagoans' beef with law enforcement. Well, how do we unpack that? Well, that same year, Laquan McDonald was killed by police officers. What does that have to do with Kanika Jenkins' death? And so we go down these different rabbit holes. We tell you a true crime story, but we also talk about societal issues in a way that, you know, MTV can resonate with its audience. And, and young people are really onto these issues right now. So we dive all the way in. Well, and I think that's a fascinating side of it, because for so long, if a crime happened before kind of social media and before networks and, and shows like this really kind of dove into that, you didn't really, you know, that it, because now so many eyeballs are, are on these particular crimes, which is good. That's what you want. So you can hopefully solve them. But it does open this whole other, you know, area. A absolutely. And, and like you said, with eyeballs, especially if you've got cases that have happened already, you know, you can Google what happened to Brittany and Crystal. But what you can't Google are those things that got missed in the actual investigation those personal family things. For example, with Brittany and Crystal, they were a queer couple. And the earlier thought was, was this a hate crime? But they targeted because they were gay. What you later find out is that one of the victim's father was so against their couple, their relationship that he scheduled their funeral for the exact same time. So people who loved both of them had to choose which funeral to go Ugh. to. So at the onset, he became a primary suspect among police officers. As, you, as I studied this case, that was something I just learned in the field. I didn't know that their funerals were scheduled for the same time. So, you know, even in this high, this, this information age where everything is public, there are still these nuggets of information and rabbit holes that we can travel down that provide more context around the victims' lives that we really want to dive into. Uh, explain next week and how it's going to be uh, laid out. Obviously, we started a, a clip with those, um, you know, with that particular crime in Texas. I know you're diving into some other ones as well. How is next week kind of laid out? Because it is different from what, you know, as you mentioned, you've done in the past. Yeah, yeah. So uh, next week, something MTV is doing that's totally new. True Crime Week kicks off July 10th, uh, July 13th, rather, at 10 p.m. Eastern, followed by Families of the Mafia. Then Wednesday, at 10 p.m. again, we're coming with another episode and then another one on Thursday. And after that, <laughs> we'll be going uh, to every Tuesday after Catfish. But we really just wanted to give folks, you know, a week to digest all of these stories. And ahead of the week, you know, folks have already been binging season one. So uh, hopefully if you get an opportunity, check out season one. It's all up on uh, MTV.com. You can watch the episodes for free and uh, and check it out and get up to speed and, and see the growth from that season to this season and how we tell these stories. Just a couple seconds left. I know one of the things when you watch these documentaries and true crime specifically, people do want to chime in afterwards. Is there I mean, do you imagine that's going to happen in social media with, you know, if people have other questions or how you kind of follow up, you know, and follow these cases after this? 
Not only that, but using the hashtag True Life Crime, I'll be following along right with you. I answer back. I talk to you. I tell you, you know, I give you little spoilers if you follow me on Twitter yeah. at MT underscore. And we, we, we talk about the show as the show is happening. So be sure to follow MTV True Life on Twitter because that's where the conversation really is happening. I, I figured there was something because, again, I'm one of those. As soon as it ends, I'm like, oh, wait, I need to talk to someone about it. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, when it comes out, Carly, we got to <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I got your hashtag. Seriously, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. All right. Take care, Domitie.